Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. Gary, a new week. That means a new adventure awaits. It's been a strange year so far. You know, the wind and everything, it all happens and whatever happens after that, it has a lot to do with, you know, walleye fishing or, or sauger fishing or whatever you're after. But the, it's just a strange year to begin with. Yeah, Gary, there's no question. Mother Nature, uh, you know, there's patterns and similarities, but there are also times where complete curveballs get thrown. And uh, figuring that out can sometimes be a challenge. And that's what we're here to do this week is at least give some advice or guidance on how when the weather patterns get a little messed up, we can hopefully still get on the water and have some success, assuming it's safe. We're catching a lot of small fish, and that's not all bad. That means it was a good hatch down the road, so... Hopefully uh, it'll continue that way for a while, but as I said before, catching a walleye or sauger below the dam, most of those are going to be your male. And the females, they'll show up later. They'll sit out in the, in the uh, deeper water, and when the temperature gets right, they'll move up, and the male will fertilize the eggs, and, and then we got her going. So, Gary, so typically, um, you know, depending on where you're listening to the program, whether it's you're further north or further south, the uh, temperatures can vary so what is sort of that sweet spot of the spawn if you will temperature wise well it's right around 48 degrees and usually in our area here it's generally in may this year who knows you know the whole deal is uh, the temperature changes so fast up and down it could happen earlier it could happen later we'll talk more about the spring conditions and of course mother nature throw in those curveballs at us with some tips and tactics hopefully we can be more successful when on the water no matter what the circumstances join us as the week rolls on thank you for joining us today thanks to our fine sponsors as well of outdoor adventures radio have a great day Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about the various conditions that might impact your fishing successes and we want to talk about some tips and tactics to help you be more successful. The smaller males, they're going to get there and try and get in on the action, I guess you'd say. And they arrive before the females. Females will come in, but they're going to go set in the deeper water. And since the water temperatures cool neither of the species need to eat a lot so they've got the same metabolism as the water temperature so so ultimately they're getting prepared for a big event but maybe still what you're saying is you don't have to necessarily go fast and furious because it's not as if they're having to put on a feed pack just yet you still have to you know lighter line lighter lures etc yeah you bet uh you know your presentation has to be slow because the water's cold and so are the fish but uh, the spawn can happen anytime but after the spawn when the water's temperatures warm up the fish are going to become more active and they begin to feed heavily and that's going to help you out it won't be quite as slow as prior to the spawn warmer water means uh, faster presentation and uh, more aggressive fish Absolutely. So ultimately, Gary, as we get past that, we get into those upper 50, 60 degree water temperatures, their eating habits are going to change. They're going to change. They're going to move around more and might even be depending on whether you're on a river system or in a lake. Yes. You know, it could they could move too. You know, you're going to have to look for them a little bit differently. Yeah. Temperature has a lot to do with it. But uh, generally the walleye and sauger this time of year will be in an area under 15 feet in the shallower water, number one, because it warms up quicker. And on the river, the north side gets the most sun, so those rocks pick up that heat and they'll hold it longer into the evening. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about the various conditions in the springtime, water temperatures, mother nature, things that can impact fishing. 
ultimately we want you to have more success let's talk about some of the variables and tips and tactics gary to help but remember they aren't going to be charging dashing darting around they're uh, they're just going to take their time and so you're going to have to take your time going after them as far as presentation goes gary you know i know there's a lot of different options out there you walk through the aisles at a sporting goods store you know what do you typically like to go equipped this time of year and, and, and really throughout the year, what do you like to go into it with? I'm a proponent of the multicolored jigs. Okay. And lighter line, and of course you can go live bait rigs, and some of those, like the Lindy or the Northern rig, are generally better when the uh, water warms up. So you got to slow down. You got if you know, if you can drag a bait along the bottom, your dead rod, and then use uh, the other rod to jig. But if you can stay vertical, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot better speed. And just last week, well, one of the my coffee drinking buddies was up at Platt and up at uh, the dam, and he. He had really good luck uh, with uh, live bait rigs, dragging a bottom bouncer, and using used minnows one day and did really well. The next day he used uh, crawlers and did really well. So they are there and they are biting, but again, slow down. You, you aren't going to race anybody. One thing too I should mention, well, especially in the cold water, the fish will maybe just mouth your bait or just pick it up and swim with it. Well, if that happens, you go back on your rod or if using this uh, spinning rule just hold your finger around the line against the rod itself and once you feel a tap you can just drop back the rod and hopefully you'll bring it on in thank you gary for the information thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors of outdoor adventures radio have a great day Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. Gary, a new week. That means a new adventure awaits. It's been a strange year so far. You know, the wind and everything, it all happens and whatever happens after that is, it has a lot to do with, you know, walleye fishing or, or sauger fishing or whatever you're after. But the, it's just a strange year to begin with. Yeah, Gary, there's no question. Mother Nature, you know, there's patterns and similarities, but there are also times where complete curveballs get thrown. And uh, figuring that out can sometimes be a challenge. And that's what we're here to do this week is at least give some advice or guidance on how when the weather patterns get a little messed up, we can hopefully still get on the water and have some success, assuming it's safe. We're catching a lot of small fish, and that's not all bad. That you know, means it was a good hatch down the road, so... Hopefully uh, it'll continue that way for a while, but as I said before, catching a walleye or sauger below the dam, most of those are going to be your males. And the females, they'll show up later. They'll sit out in the, in the uh, deeper water, and when the temperature gets right, they'll move up, and the male will fertilize the eggs, and, and then we got her going. So, Gary, so typically, um, you know, depending on where you're listening to the program, whether it's you're further north or further south, the uh, temperatures can vary. So what is sort of that sweet spot of the spawn, if you will, temperature-wise? Well, it's right around 48 degrees, and usually in our area here, it's generally in May. This year, who knows? You know, the whole deal is uh, that temperature changes so fast, up and down, it could happen earlier or it could happen later. We'll talk more about the spring conditions and, of course, Mother Nature throw in those curveballs at us with some tips and tactics. Hopefully, we can be more successful when on the water, no matter what the circumstances. Join us as the week rolls on. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks to our fine sponsors as well of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. As we wind down the week, Gary, let's recap this week's adventure. Uh, it hasn't been that good for fishing, but now that things are warming up, you get more boats out on the, out of the water. Eventually, you get more anglers out there, they're going to find the fish. And uh, most of them are, are going to be in their spawning areas. So, and the main reason they're there is uh, in the shallow waters to spawn. And the female, she stays deep. She doesn't have to come in. The male is running around trying to find a receptive female. But when the water temperature gets right, she'll move up, and the, uh, the males will fertilize the eggs, and then we've got another hatch coming on. 
All right, got to keep the perpetuate the species, which is all part of it. So, a lot of typically smaller fish, as you mentioned, the males. But if you do hook into one of those big mamas, uh, we always uh, advocate for taking a picture and putting her back if possible. Exactly. Yep. That's that's our, our future. You take them home and clean them. They aren't. There's no future for anything. All right. A fantastic outdoor adventure. Love to be back in the outdoors. Gary, in addition to this radio program, love to uh, catch you on the television, also all over the World Wide Web. Tell me how I can find you. Yeah, Outdoorsman Adventures, the television show, airs in eight states throughout the upper Midwest. You want to check your local channels and uh, day and time for the listing. Also in South Dakota, North Dakota, and into Minnesota, we're on the Midco Sports Network in Nebraska. One of the larger channels is News Channel Nebraska. Or you can go to Facebook at Outdoorsman Adventures, www.outdoorsmanadventures.com, and also my website, which is Gary Howie's Outdoors. All right, Gary, so many ways to join in the fun and uh, enjoy you taking us through adventure this week. Look forward to doing it again next week. My pleasure, Simon. We also send a big thank you out to all of our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio and to you for joining us today and throughout the weeks. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. As we wind down the week, Gary, let's recap this week's adventure. Uh, It hasn't been that good for fishing, but now that things are warming up, you get more boats out on the the water, and eventually you get more anglers out there, they're going to find the fish. And uh, most of them are are going to be in their spawning areas, so. And the main reason they're there is uh, in the shallow waters to spawn. And the female, she stays deep, she doesn't have to come in. The male is running around trying to find a receptive female, but when the water temperature gets right, she'll move up and the, uh, the males will fertilize the eggs and then we've got another hatch coming on. All right, got to keep the perpetuate the species, which is all part of it. So, a lot of typically smaller fish, as you mentioned, the males. But if you do hook into one of those big mamas, uh, we always uh, advocate for taking a picture and putting her back if possible. Exactly. Yep. That's that's our, our future. You take them home and clean them. They aren't. There's no future for anything. All right. A fantastic outdoor adventure. Love to be back in the outdoors. Gary, in addition to this radio program, love to uh, catch you on the television, also all over the World Wide Web. Tell me how I can find you. Yeah, Outdoorsman Adventures, the television show, airs in eight states throughout the upper Midwest. You want to check your local channels and uh, day and time for the listing. Also in South Dakota, North Dakota, and into Minnesota, we're on the Midco Sports Network in Nebraska. One of the larger channels is News Channel Nebraska. Or you can go to Facebook at Outdoorsman Adventures, www.outdoorsmanadventures.com, and also my website, which is Gary Howie's Outdoors. All right, Gary, so many ways to join in the fun and uh, enjoy you taking us through adventure this week. Look forward to doing it again next week. My pleasure, Simon. We also send a big thank you out to all of our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio and to you for joining us today and throughout the weeks. Until next time, may your adventures be great.